Good evening, and thank you for joining Madrigos Midwest for a third Parenting in a Pandemic series. While we wish that a series like this would no longer be necessary, we are proud that we are able to continue providing our community with tools and resources to help both us and our children manage this extremely challenging time period. My name is Shulit Sadok, and I'm the Clinical Director here at Madrigos Midwest. Our Madrigos Counseling Center has been extremely busy with new intakes coming in daily. We have been continuing to provide therapy for adolescents and young adults over telehealth, and we have slowly reopened our offices for limited in-person sessions as well. Our full staff of therapists have been working very hard to meet the needs of our clients and provide much needed support. For those who are looking to get started with therapy, you can visit our website at madrigosmidwest.org intake or call our main number, and I'd be very happy to guide you through our process. Our speaker tonight, Mrs. Fran Gutstein, is already very recognized and respected here in Chicago for her amazing parenting work. She's a clinical social worker who has worked across many different clinical settings for over 30 years. She currently maintains a private practice where she works with children, adolescents, adults, couples, and families. We're very grateful for her time tonight and we're all looking forward to hearing what she has to share with us. After Mrs. Gutstein's presentation, we'll be taking anonymous questions from the participants. Please use the Q&A button on the bottom of your screen to submit questions as we will not be taking live questions. I will now hand this over to Mrs. Gutstein. Thank you so much. I'd like to warmly welcome you all. And the title for tonight is, we're supposed to be talking about acceptance in these challenging times. And the title is Help Nothing's Working. And I think that's probably a feeling and a thought and a, um, words that we can all resonate with. So let's talk about um, we as parents. And we as parents are children's everything. This is a tremendous responsibility as we strive to find a sense of acceptance in the midst of parenting in Corona's stress and uncertainty. I'm reminded of a fable that I heard many years ago. A woman with many children could not find anything to eat for her children. And then alas, there was an egg, one egg. And what was she to do? She had all of these children. Was she gonna cook it and divide it? Which child was she gonna give it to? Well, what'd she do? She cooked the egg and she hid herself in a room and she ate the egg herself. And then nourished and strong, she was able to gather food for her children and lovingly nourish, nourish and nurture them. Similar to the instructions when we, that we hear before taking off in a plane, when God forbid, in case of emergency, secure your oxygen, masks before taking care of others. So this is really important information when we think about acceptance in these really difficult times. Let's closely explore acceptance and how it impacts relationships in terms of how we understand ourselves as parents and how we interact with our children. As parents, we often struggle with many issues around control. How much to control, how little to control. Bottom line, what to control, and if there's anything at all that we can control. Powerfully, Corona has reminded us that there is so much that is not within our control. And perhaps it has given us permission to slow things down, to notice that the only thing we really have control of is this very moment. This is a powerful concept in terms of acceptance. We can become so lost in what can be, in, we can become so lost in what can be that we must, we miss what is happening right now. Acceptance is not the same as resignation or feeling powerless or hopeless. And it is not the same as sugarcoating reality. Instead, the acceptance that I'm talking about refers to making a conscious choice to experience our sensations our feelings, our thoughts, just as they are. When we practice acceptance in this way, when we give up trying to control or manipulate our experience, we open the door 
to acknowledging. This is so powerful and so important. When we acknowledge what is happening, acknowledge the experience we happen, that's happening. We don't become the experience. We often say, I'm so anxious. I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so stressed. Uh-uh, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about acknowledging, noticing, noticing the feeling. Take a breath, slow down. Notice what you're experiencing. Notice what you're feeling. Give yourself permission to feel the feeling. It gives you a moment to separate yourself from the feeling, to separate yourself from the experience. It slows you down. It gives you some distance. Then you're not the experience. You're not the feeling. You are feeling the experience. It almost feels like a wave. You notice that there's a feeling. You might need to name it. Name it to tame it. You might even need to welcome it. And that sounds a little odd, but we're talking about dealing with some stressful times. It's almost like, okay, hello, anxiety. Now you're coming. I know you're here. I feel this wave. Here's anxiety. But it's not, I am anxious. I'm feeling anxious. Acknowledge its presence. Watch it come and watch it go as you may or may not choose to talk to it. Give yourself permission to state that in this moment, you are feeling overwhelmed again, rather than you are overwhelmed. Again, it takes the experience outside of you. <clears throat> consider inviting in compassion. Think about saying to yourself, it is understandable that I might be feeling overwhelmed the, right now. Consider saying to yourself, it's okay that I'm experiencing these feelings. Rather than what you are not doing, focus on what you are doing. As we strive to regulate ourselves, it behooves us to look at our connections and relationships with our children. They are part of our acceptance in this, in this time of Corona, in this very difficult, in this very difficult experience. Especially in these challenging times, our patients may be limited. We have to make choices about what issues we address, what's important. How do we ultimately show up in relation to our children? I want to share a metaphor. And it's not only about our children, it's about ourselves. Okay? I want you to think about this. And it all relates to acceptance, it relates to relationship, it relates to how we look at ourselves, and it relates to how we interact with our children. Imagine that you woke up very early this morning and you managed to do the dishes, you managed to um, get the house in order, you managed to clean, you managed to clean the house, uh, you managed to um, pay all your bills, um, you managed to get I mean, I think I said you managed to do the laundry, you managed to fold the laundry, you managed to put away the laundry. Um, uh, uh, let's see, what else did you manage to do? Um, you managed to um, gather together the information to pay your taxes. Um, you had a little extra time. Um, you did some learning. You went over the Parsha. Uh, you had a little extra time, so you finished that novel that you were really trying to get through. And then you saw the sun rising. And you said, I think I'm gonna look outside and see what the weather's like. And you looked outside and you saw that there was a piece of paper on your car. And you went to check and you looked closer and there was, oh my God, a $250 ticket on your car. Ah, oh, you forgot that you weren't supposed to park your car there. There was some major construction. Oh my gosh. Now, what are you gonna think about all day? All those things you had gotten done before sunrise or that $250 ticket. 
And what will you focus and what will you um, perseverate? Most of the time, most of us will think about the $250 ticket. We're not going to think about all the things that went well. We tend to do this for ourselves. We can do many things well, and then one thing goes wrong. That becomes the area of focus. The same thing goes in our interactions for our kids. Think about it this way. Every day they come in, they take off their shoes, they go in. Every day, thank you. Thanks, honey. Thanks, thanks for taking off your shoes. Great job. Thank you. Take off their shoes. Thank you. Thank you if we say thank you. Thank you if we say thank you. Then one day they run in, they, for take, they forget to take off their shoes, and that happens to be the day that you just got the carpeting clean if you have carpeting, or that happens to be the day that you washed the floors and everything was in order. Oh my gosh, you can go on and wax poetically, very specifically, in the moment, stopping everything you're doing, connecting, telling them, I can't believe this. You took off, you, you ran in here with your shoes on. Look at step by step, look at the mess you made, not even thinking, the irresponsibility you showed. Connecting, specifically giving presents, showing them who they are in the moment when something negative go on. Now, let's take that information. Let's rewind to everything we've already talked about, okay? What have we talked about? We've talked about what Corona has given us. All the Corona has given this in these stressful times. Corona showed us all that we've got is the moment. It's shown us that we need to slow down. We need to decide how we're going to show up in our relationships. That's the way we've got to get to acceptance. We've got to decide how we're going to show up for ourselves, and we've got to decide how we're going to show up for our kids. All that we have is the moment, the very precious moments that Hashem grants us. Hashem grants us each moment. How are we going to show up in the very precious moment to moment in the midst of the uncertainties that we are facing now? This is, um, this is another tool that I've used over the years. It's a wonderful example. And um, social media has kind of taken it away from me, but I'm going to use it anyways, because I'd, I'd like to continue to share the example through this. When you look at this, what do you see? And many people will say the first thing that they see is the black dot. Because the black dot is the first thing that glares so prevalently on the picture. But the reality is there's so much more white space on the page than the black dot. The black dot isn't going away, but the white space is so much more pre prevalent. Is it possible in our relationship with self and our relationship with our children through these difficult times and really through all times in general, but let's focus on these difficult times right now. Is it possible as we strive for acceptance that we learn to live in the white space, that we begin to shift our perspective and look for what's going right? There's a wonderful story that I heard about the Lubavitcher Rebbe many years ago a family came to the Lubavitcher Rebbe with their child and they were so distressed. Their son didn't care about school. He was a behavioral problem all the time, creating difficulties, creating challenges. He just wouldn't try. He wouldn't, he wouldn't listen all the time, causing problems. And the family was at wit's ends. The parents didn't know what to do. So the Rebbe lovingly called him up and said, tell me, is it true that you don't like to sit in class? And the little boy said, or the little little boy, I don't know if he was a little boy, I don't know if he was a teenager, but the, the boy said, I don't, like, I don't like school, I don't like class. And the rabbi said, is it true that you don't listen to your parents? He said, yep, I don't listen to them. I don't like what they say. I don't like listening to them. 
and the Rebbe said, "Is it true that that if if it that 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 um, that that you um, that you like to cause problems in class and and you like to get in trouble?" He said, "Yes." And the Rebbe looked at him and he said, "And you are telling the truth and you're being honest." And I appreciate that about you. And I honor that about you, that you are being honest. And it really struck that boy. And because of the Rebbe's words, the boy took that to heart. The Rebbe saw what was going right. And with time, the boy held those words in his heart that the Rebbe could have reprimand, reprimanded him, but he didn't. He took that nugget of gold that nugget of truth about what was going right. And the truth was that he was telling the truth. And he started right there with that nugget, that nugget of positivity and connected in relationship with him authentically with what was going well and what was going right. And said to him, I see that about you. You're honest. You're not lying to me. You're telling me the truth. You're a truthful boy. And he held that, and that boy chose to turn his life around. Our children want to connect with us. They want us to see who they are. We, we are our kids. We, again, our kids will always come to us for connection. They want to connect with us. So if you may, let me give you an example. Consider this. It is as though we are our children's greatest toy. Think about this. You can give your kids any number of toys. You can get them video games. You can get them the latest mega tiles. But after a while, they're going to get tired of them. They will never get tired of you. And they will never get tired of pressing your buttons. Because you have an endless amount of buttons. Think about it. They press a button and then there you go. The challenge for you in terms of creating relationship, creating connection with your child as you navigate these times is through relationship with your child, you support them towards acceptance, is how you show up when they press your buttons. When they press a negative button, do you show up alive and with intensity? And when they show a pot, is that how you show up? My question to you. You have the choice. Or when they press a negative button, you have the choice to give, to, to choose that that negative button is not working. And when they press a positive button, rather than saying something like, great job, fantastic, to show up in, in, um, in a very present way that authentically, in the moment, actively recognizes what they're doing with excitement, and joy, connection, acknowledging who they are. Again, all we have is the gift of the pre present moment. In each of these present moments, you have the opportunity to notice very specifically what's going on. To say to your child, I see that you're sitting at the table. You've turned on Zoom. You're connecting with what your class is going, with go what's going on, what's going on with Zoom. You're sitting, you're, you're playing, you're playing quietly. You're asking me a question. There's something you want to know. We have the opportunity to see what's going right, to live in the white space, to be connect, creating connection through the white space. In parenting, the truth is our greatest challenge is seeing our children for who they are and not for what we want them to be. Rabbi Shimon Russell explained in a parenting lecture that I was privileged to hear many years ago. Children can share our physical DNA, our allergies, our migraines, perhaps, perhaps even a receding, uh, a receding hairline. 
but they do not share our spiritual DNA. Our children's neshama is absolutely their own. Who our child's neshama is, has nothing to do with us. They have their own journey. What we can do is we can be absolutely present with our child and notice who our child is in the moment. And by seeing who our child is in the moment, we give visibility to our child. We give visibility to their, their, their neshama and we say to them, you matter to me. You are significant. I see who you are. I don't want you to be different. I honor your neshama without judgment. I want you to be who you are. We often view our role as fixer, rescuer. After all, we don't want our children to be hurt. We don't want them to make mistakes. We don't want things to work against them. But sometimes it's okay to just let someone else's stuff be theirs. And I'm talking about this in relation to our children, especially in these difficult times. And I'm not talking about shrugging off or ignoring them, especially in these difficult times, especially as we want them to get to a place of acceptance. I'm talking about being extremely emotionally present with them, but in a different way. Consider trying this. When your son or daughter comes to you and they are going through something tough, stop, don't jump in and don't offer a solution. Don't become the fixer. Listen to what they are saying. Really listen, be present with them. You don't have to have an answer or a solution. This is where you have the opportunity to become a soothing presence during these very emotionally tough times. Consider saying to them, I'm so glad you're talking to me about this. This is important. I'm so glad you came to me with this. Honor them. Say to them, you really know you feel this way. Name the feeling for them. Say to them, you're so aware that you're feeling this way. Don't go to judgment. Give them space to feel. If someone says to us, don't feel that way, we feel squashed. Why would we say to a child, don't feel that way? We want to say to them, you so are so aware of what you're feeling. We, we, I want to suggest we even push it further and say, tell me more. What else happened? Is there more? I want to know. I care. Try not to use the word why. Why can feel like a very finger pointing word. Why can feel like very accusing, put on the spot. Try opening the door of communication instead Help me under, say to them, help me understand what this means for you. Again, with an open heart, trust yourself. Don't be judgmental. Listen. You don't have to agree. You don't have to give in. You can step back and give them space to feel. Respect their feelings and thoughts for what they mean to them. For them and for us, this can very often diminish the intensity of what they're experiencing. Now, in Corona and throughout other crises. Sometimes, and even as we're seeing now, there are no solutions. However, having reality, reality validated allows them and allows us to move on, allows each of us to cope with the bumps. Sometimes this whole process 
happens just by sitting with our child, by sitting with our feelings, by being with the experience, by being present. Sometimes these can be the loudest words, the most effective experience of all. All of this is not easy. The takeaway is that we need to accept that we have no control over the bigger picture. What we do have control over is how we show up for ourselves and for our kids and our relationship. And hopefully with this understanding, our relationships will be more positively and meaningfully deepened and strengthened as we navigate the journey before us in these challenging times. Thank you so very much. Can't hear you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Gutstein, for your amazing insights and helping us continue to manage our new reality. Um, we're going to take a few questions now that, that were submitted. Um, our first question is, what is your best advice um, when parents are so stressed now with all the schools closing and opening and closing again and trying to manage their own anxiety? What do you suggest is the best way to kind of, you know, help our kids manage their anxiety when parents are also feeling so stressed? I think again, that it's actually a co-regulation kind of experience that you can almost model for your child, that you can take a deep breath. First of all, you've got to get to the place where you're first taking a deep breath and you're saying, stressful. There's a strong sense of overwhelm. I'm feeling it. Your kids are feeling the uncertainty you have to know that there's tremendous uncertainty. There's a lot of unknowing. There's a lot of uncertainty. When you can take it in and you can make that okay to feel, and you can almost make that okay to feel with your child and make it okay that that's the experience, that we're not sure what's happening and we don't know what's gonna be. And we can allow ourselves to feel that. Kids need space to feel you need to make it okay that they're feeling it. Take a deep breath, feel it, and you might need to do that together with them. Um, I would suggest before you do that, that you're okay first before you take that deep breath. If you're so heightened, don't do that in their presence. First, <laughs> regulate yourself, but you wanna model for them. Okay, we've got this. Let's breathe. And then let's think about what we have. What's our plan? You might also want to say to them, what's different? Let's talk about what we have that's different here. And actually make a list with them for them to be dealing with the differences so that they can have a sense of, okay, so now this is different. And what are they missing? And give them the opportunity to talk about that too. And take that from inside of them to the outside make a list with them. What's different today? Put it out there rather than just keeping this all inside. The more that they can get outside, the better. Thank you. So the next question is, how should we respond when we mess up, when we are overcome with our own anxiety or frustration? Um, we're human and we can say it is okay to mess up. When we're talking about messing up, you know, we might even want to say, it's okay to say, I need, I'm going to just take a moment and I'm going to breathe. I'm, I just need a moment. Or we can also say to our kids, um, I, that wasn't okay. And I'm going to come back in. What happened there? I'm going to come right back in. I'm going to come back in, take a breath. We need to, these breaths are really important. Take a breath, come back in, 
and be real about what happened. We don't have, our children should not become responsible for our emotional experience. We should not be explaining to them, this was really tough. I had a very difficult day. Dad and I had a fight. We should not be explaining that to them. But when we come back in and say, okay, starting again. It's okay to take a breath and start again. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who tuned in tonight. Please join us again next Tuesday night at 8.30 for our second lecture, Recognizing and Helping Your Child's Anxiety with Mrs. Lynn Scheiman. Have a great week. Thanks.